So have you seen there is something on substantive and procedural law? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So what procedural law. So substantial law refers to that uh, statutes that is passed by the government, that oh. is legislature. Hmm. And procedural law means uh, how the procedure we, one has to follow in the court. Okay. So where are the procedures mentioned? Uh, procedures are mentioned in criminal procedure, code of criminal procedure. Okay, so is that not a legislation? I don't know, ma'am. Okay. So that also is a legislation, but yeah, like both are legislations, just that two classifications, okay? Just like how we have civil and criminal. Both are two different areas of laws, right? Same way, we have substantive as well as procedural. Both are like legislations only we have, just that they talk about two different things. Okay, ma'am. Okay, so IPC, it starts with the general principles of crime, concept of crime, distinction between crime and other laws. <clears throat> Okay, difference between substantive and procedural part is not there, is it? I think yes, I saw it. Okay. All right, fine. So we'll start with these things general principles of crime, concept of crime. All right. So this thing, right? Substantive and procedural. This part is actually very important. Okay. Okay. I will share one video this for this part. You can just watch that part, okay? Because it's not there in the syllabus. You can simply watch that. It will be anyways, okay. you have an idea, you can just see that part, okay? Now, starting with IPC, what we have is general principles of crime, concepts of crime. So IPC, if you have, you know, like you have the bare act, is it? Yes, ma'am. You have it, okay. So how many sections are there total in IPC? There are 511 sections. 511, yeah. In 20, 23 chapters, 23. 24 chapters. 24 or 23? Yeah. So IPC, we have where in the provisions, uh, the different things which are given, they are divided in different sections. Plus there are different uh, chapters as well. Chapter wise, they are being divided and IPC provides for definition Plus, it also provides for a definition of different types of crimes that may be committed and also punishment for uh, those crimes. If something is committed, what will be the punishment that a person would get? That thing is also given there. So IPC, these are the different sections we have and we have total of 23 chapters and 511 sections are there. Okay, now IPC provides for definition plus uh, it also provides for the uh, punishment that may be provided. Same ways when we are studying IPC, another thing becomes very important, which is nothing but CRPC, Code of Criminal Procedure, which talks about the procedural part, how we should be going to the court, how things would happen inside the court. Apart from that, there is one very important thing which CRPC provides for. Okay, like you must be aware, right? There is something called as bailable offense, non-bailable offense, right? Yes, ma'am. Are you aware there is something called as cognizable and non-cognizable offense? Yes, ma'am. You are aware. Compoundable and non-compoundable? Compound double. Yes, yes, ma'am. I know it very lightly. Some some crimes where parties can basically compromise between themselves, like in a check bounce case, compromise is allowed. But in a okay. case like murder, parties cannot say that okay, we will compromise, but this entire trial would go on and court would decide what is the punishment. Okay, like that also crimes are divided. So this part becomes very important, okay? CRPC 167 page number where we have first schedule provided. 
schedule okay. is nothing but additional information right here what happens is they are providing for offenses under ipc there are so many offenses given in ipc those offenses are listed here okay which section is providing for the offense what offense is it what is the punishment for that offense this is already something that we get in ipc this is additional yes. information which is very much important for us it talks about whether the crime is cognizable or non cognizable bailable or non bailable and in which court the case will be filed is it magistrate court sessions court magistrate first class what court it is that thing is given okay okay you can go through this list also very interesting part So now if we look at IPC, Indian Penal Code, here we have 511 sections divided in 23 different chapters. Now talking about crime, because IPC provides for uh, definitions of different types of crime. So what is a crime according to you? A crime is an act that is committed or omitted and which is prohibited by law. And it is forbidden by the law and also condemned by the people, society in general. Hmm. Yes, correct. So it may be commission, it may be omission. Both the cases, it can be considered as a crime. So as such crime, the word crime is not being defined in IPC. But yes, we do have an idea of what crime is. But to commit a crime, Okay, we need some elements to be present. First is human being. Okay, so who is a person according to you? Person. Person. A human being is the person who comes immediately to the mind. Hmm. And then organizations. Organizations. Are they hmm. also persons? But we can sue the organization like that. Yes. So correct. Otherwise, in general, when we say person, it's just living human beings who comes to our mind. But in law, this uh, definition is like the it, it is having a wider interpretation. It not just includes living human beings like you or me, but it also includes something called as artificial person or a juristic person. Juristic as in only for the purpose of law, they are considered as a person. You can file a case okay. against them. They can also file a case in their name. It need not be the directors or the other officers who are having the authority to sort of represent the company. But in the name of company also, cases may be filed. Like mostly you would see uh there will be like one or the other defamation case filed against newspaper publishing houses it will be filed against their name or maybe they have filed some case for check bounds or maybe some other sort of crimes right so they are nothing but artificial person or juristic person and it's not just about ipc there are many other laws wherein they are recognized as a person like in case of uh property laws also okay they can hold and acquire property both movable and immovable they can send property give it on lease mortgage everything they can open bank account in their own name temples can take donations in their own bank account right so many things are there in case of trust also we see so much of power is given to them so that is nothing but person which is defined in section 11 of IPC as well. It says I person includes any company or association or body of person, whether incorporated or not, those also will be included in this definition of person. So a case can be filed against them also, and they may also file a case basically. Okay. In case of cheating also, you would see there is a section like 420, 
sections like 499, 500, there we mostly see companies also uh, being parties, case being filed against company as well. Now, earlier times, what used to happen is like we have these different uh, theories of punishment. You know, right? why, why is it that punishment should be given? What is the logic behind it? Like that, we had certain theories, like five theories are there, uh, which you will read in jurisprudence. So there are five theories which provides for the reason why punishment should be given. So what do you feel why punishment is needed? One, th one thing is to make him aware of the crime hmm. that he has committed and to feel remorse hmm. or correct himself so that he won't commit it again. Hmm. And a crime which is unpunished is like supporting uh, others also to commit the same crime. Hmm. A crime which goes unpunished will also, people will not take that serious as and consider that as an offense. Hmm. And so that, so that elements in the society fear before committing such crime. Hmm. Yes, correct. So it is, yeah, that, those are reasons. Like, first of all, it is like reforming the person. Secondly, we want to set this as an example so that other people also would realize that it's not that easy to escape the punishment if I commit a crime. Like that, we have different theories, okay? Earlier times, the concept was that we want to prevent the person, okay? If today someone has committed a crime, we want to bring him to such a position that tomorrow he is not in a position to commit that crime again. Okay, have you heard this? There is one statement, right? A tooth for a tooth, a limb for a limb, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a limb for a limb, uh, life for yes. a life. You have heard, right? So that used to be followed in earlier times, wherein it was said that if someone has caused you, you know, like someone has maybe chopped off your limb, you also do the same thing to the person. Mm. That was at one stage. Then in another stage, it was like, we need to punish the person. We need to, uh, you know, like make him realize that he has committed a crime. So earlier times, we did not know this concept of, uh, you know, like who is able to reform or who would understand that, okay, because I did this, I'm getting this punishment. Okay, in earlier times, it was like if an animal has also caused you some harm, you do the same thing to the animal. You can even punish the animal because we would consider that animals have committed the crime. But today, because of civilization, we have realized that most of the times, even though the animal has caused us some harm or loss, the animal would not even realize that he is punished for doing that certain thing. Rather, we may train the animal some good behavior or things like that. But what we can do, we can make the owner responsible for it, right? That why did you leave your animal just like that openly? Now you need to pay the compensation for whatever loss is being caused, right? Now those things are realized. That's why we are saying human being, as in it has to be a person, whether it's a natural human being like us, or it is an artificial or juristic person, it has to be a human being. We do not punish animals anymore, right? Rather, we would try to give them some training or things like that. Those work better. That's the first element, okay? Okay. Second is menstrua or guilty intention. So what is menstrua? And the first two, the intention, the objective behind committing a crime or achieve a purpose. Hmm. It's from a person's uh, thinking, their motive, their intentions behind committing the crime. Are intentions and motives same or they are different? They are different. They are different. Okay. Correct. So menstrua or guilty intention is very much needed in case of crimes. Because in case of crime, the main aim is that we want to punish the person. 
Okay, we want to punish the person and mostly we want to reform him, reform in a better human being. Because we believe in this concept, like, like Gandhiji said, right? Hate the sin and not the sinner because no one is born a criminal. It's because of the situations that the person end up committing a crime. That way in India also we believe that it's always possible for a person to reform himself in a better human being. Self-realization is always possible. And that's why it is very important that we should have guilty intention. Okay, for crimes, guilty intention is needed because only when I have a guilty intention, based on that I committed a crime, punishment would make sense because it will give me a chance to you know, like realize it, right? To reform myself. If I have done something by mistake without any bad intention, punishment is of no use. I'm simply crowding the jail maybe, right? So that is the thing which is uh, followed here that mens rea or guilty intention is very much needed for most of the crimes it's relevant. If mens rea is not there, even if other elements are satisfied, it's not even considered as a crime. Like you can read theft, okay, 379 of IPC theft. It says, what is theft? It's like you are moving some movable property, all right? Maybe I have taken your phone from your position to my position. Why am I doing it? With a bad intention that I'll keep your phone with me. Only if I have a bad intention, it will be considered as a crime and not otherwise. So mostly, uh, guilty intention is very much relevant. Otherwise, the act will not even be considered as a crime. Okay, but there are certain legislations which we call as social welfare legislation. Like we have introduced that legislation for welfare or benefit of the common people. In such legislations, it does not make sense that we are looking at intention thing because main aim is to do welfare for the people okay any example of such social welfare legislation that you can think of introduced for benefit of people that people should not suffer motor vehicles act we have a legislation right there are civil provisions also criminal also there that it aims at providing compensation to parties and stuff right in yes. road traffic accident cases mostly they are unintentional but mm. if we start looking at the intention part the legislation itself will become meaningless because most of the times parties will escape the punishment thing right so in some cases intention may not be relevant but mostly for criminal laws, intention is very much relevant. Okay, and when we say intention and motive, they are two different things. Like my intention may be to kill a person and why am I doing it? Because of a motive. Because maybe I want to take possession of his shop that he is having. So in order to take possession, I thought there is no better way than killing the person. So killing is my intention and having possession of the shop is my ultimate motive why i'm committing the crime okay so first of all we have human being secondly we have mens rea or guilty intention but now mens rea is just in my mind right just having bad thoughts in my mind is not enough because it's not causing any harm to anyone plus it's very difficult to prove as well Right? How can you yes. prove that I have the bad intention of killing someone unless and until I have done something for it? Right? That's why we have a maxim called actus non fisitrium nisi mens citria, which means just having the guilty intention in the brain is not enough. We need to do some guilty act as well. So both guilty act plus guilty intention taken together will constitute a crime. Okay, that's why we have the third element being actus rea or illegal act or omission. I have this bad intention that I should uh, somehow try to, you know, like escape this liability of paying income tax. 
and why am i doing it because i have this intention of escaping that because i want to maybe gain some uh, profit over there i don't want to pay tax to the government in that case only when i you know like willfully omit it it would become a crime right so this is nothing but actus rea or illegal act or omission so there are certain crimes wherein intention intention might not be relevant as well right whether you have the bad intention or not it's a crime anyways like i cannot say that okay i did not have any bad intention behind not paying income tax i was just not aware of it i cannot say that right because whether it was intentional or not i have committed the crime so fine will be imposed anyways so it may vary from case to case but mostly for criminal cases intention is given a lot more importance intention is very much needed yes ma'am okay and the last one being last one being injury to another human being someone has to suffer a loss it may be one person it may be group of persons it may be anyone basically right someone has suffered a loss now when we say harm injury or loss it does not mean like physical harm it may be any harm caused to the body mind reputation property and so many other different variations we have it has to be some sort of an injury in fact when yes, we look at ipc crimes are divided depending on what is it that it is affecting is it a person's body is it a person's property like that also we see different classifications of crimes right so there has to be some injury caused to a person or maybe a group of person body etc all right so these are the four elements of crime human being which may include natural living human being like you or me or it may be artificial or juristic person as well same ways we have mens rea or guilty intention we have actus rea or illegal act or omission injury to another human being which may include any type of injury body mind reputation property whatsoever it will be included over there okay is this part clear yes ma'am okay now when we look at ipc the legislation we see that ipc is having mainly two different parts okay first part is on general principles some general principles are there so what are gen what are general principles or what are principles in as such principles I don't have an idea, ma'am. Okay, so uh, it's like how in case of you are from science background, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, like how we had this red right? Newton's law, this law, that law. Those things will remain as it is, right? They would not change. They may be applied in different situations wherein you can explain a concept based on those principles. Same ways. in law also we have certain principles okay when we say general principles these may be applied in multiple given situations so general principles are nothing but some common principles that apply in case of different types of crimes different situations like mens rea is a general principle okay mens rea establishes that okay fine a person is having bad intention it may be relevant in this case it might not be relevant in that case with the help of that general principle you get an understanding on a certain concept or it helps you distinguish whether it's a crime or not same ways we have certain other general principles like common intention common object group of people having the same intention they planned and committed something okay common intention maybe group of people had the common object of causing loss to another person they came together committed a crime 
it may be abetment a person created such a situation right abetment to commit suicide a person created such a situation that the other person had no other option but to commit the suicide right criminal conspiracy they planned some bad things they planned like group of people and then they finally executed it those concepts are also there which we get in this first part of ipc okay some general things we get plus we also get general defenses so what are general defenses have you seen that part oh yes ma'am like uh, when the crime is not intended hmm. to be committed hmm. it may be in cases of self defense or like one like a person uh, with unsoundness of mind hmm. who is not a, a proper mind state if he commits any offense and those can be excused by the law yes so otherwise if a crime is committed elements are there the stages are there we say that okay it's a crime the person is entitled to punishment but there may be some situations where even though technically speaking a crime is committed but still there is a scope of excuse or there is a scope for justification either it may be something that we can excuse it even though crime is committed loss is caused or we may justify it those are nothing but general defenses so we have all these 10 different uh, general exceptions or general defenses which apply okay and when we say general defenses as in they are general okay they can be applied in any type of crime that we have under ipc But for specific crimes you may get specific defenses also when a crime is explained there it may say if this is not there it will not be a crime there we may have specific defenses also but these are like general ones which would apply in any sort of crime after this first part we have the main provision which is nothing but specific offenses ipc provides definition as well as punishment for different types of crimes that may be committed these are just few of the examples there are a lot more different classifications like offenses committed against state offenses relating to public servant relating to election false evidence relating to coins and government stamps offenses affecting human body property defamation so many different uh, classifications we have okay so these are the major things that ipc provides for okay and apart from this ipc also mentions regarding different types of punishment okay because we have this long list of crimes that may be committed in india plus the punishment for it so before starting with the specific offenses ipc has provided for a list of different types of punishments that may be given in india as well then uh, when a crime is committed it's not like i just committed it okay most of the times it is pre planned premeditated crime so in such cases there are four stages that will be involved over there so these are nothing but stages of crime it applies in case of premeditated or pre planned crimes wherein it's like full proper planning and after that the plan is being executed here also first stage will be intention okay i will have the intention that okay i will call, kill this person right maybe i don't like this so and so person so i want to kill him that is nothing but intention so intention becomes very much relevant okay and it's the first stage but then it's there in my mind only right only in my mind i'm thinking that i don't like this person so i want to kill him but it's very difficult to prove it or it's very difficult for someone else to know about my bad intention okay so that is the reason why at this stage mostly crimes are not punishable because there is lesser possibility that i will disclose my bad intention to someone and even if i do 
it would be very difficult for the other person to prove it in court. That's why most of the crimes are not punishable at this stage, except for these two, which are waging war against government and sedition, because these are serious offenses against the state. That's why they are made punishable even at the stage of intention, if that can be proved or if that can be you know, like established that this person had a bad intention. That's why the person committed this crime. That toolkit case was being very popular last year, right? Have you seen that? Pegasus. Pegasus software. Yeah, yeah. No, that, not that Pegasus one. Another toolkit for this one, this uh, this farmer's protest which was going on. This Sharavi was arrested for sedition. Oh, this man. I think you... Sedition, but how, how can one prove, ma'am? Yeah, that is, that is the thing. Only by their actions, they would just feel like, okay, this is sedition. There are so many cases wherein a person is like simply arrested. Okay, Tisha, lovely. It is, that's why it's so much in, it was so much in discussions and debates last year. There was one, yeah, Tisha, the, she was arrested, right, for... Uh, sedition uh, based on these charges. Plus, there was another one, like there was one doctor, I guess, from UP. He was also arrested and kept in uh, prison for a very long time. Like there was some oxygen scarcity in a government hospital in uh, UP. And then this doctor like tried to save lives of people by somehow managing oxygen. And then uh, th uh, this uh, Yogi Adityanath, he just felt that it's maybe, you know, like it's affecting their reputation and he was booked under charges of sedition and then he was there in jail for a very long time. There are like so many cases wherein people are simply like arrested just like that. So it's definitely difficult to prove, but yeah, based on those assumptions that it is sedition, they are arrested. Okay, so these are just the two crimes wherein at the stage of intention also, person may be uh, a person may be made liable basically otherwise it's difficult Excuse to, me, yeah uh, at the intention stage if mm. two people discuss like as you have given in the example a and b discussing mm. about waging war uh, about against the government mm. uh, in, are they punishable just for speaking against like yeah, they have, they have not... yes, they don't need to do anything also. Even if they have okay. not gone to the second stage of preparation, just at this stage also they may be punished. Okay. Okay, intention stage only it may be punished because we have not yet reached the second stage. In second stage, there are a few more things which are uh, made punishable. Okay, so first one was intention, just these two crimes. Preparation is, it involves actus rea because we are doing something we are making the necessary arrangements so if i have an intention of killing a person maybe i will decide how to kill the person is it i want to give maybe poison to the person if yes i will maybe go and buy poison i will track his movement at what time he is going out at what time he is alone and at house all those things i would do that is nothing but a preparation stage. I'm actually doing something to, uh, you know, like fulfill my intentions. But at this stage also, it's not very easy to prove uh, that preparation is made for committing this crime only, right? Because even if I am having possession of poison, I can easily say that maybe I have some insects at my home and to kill that I bought poison or maybe I'm doing some research for that, I bought poison. I want to do some experiment. For that, I bought poison. There are multiple ways to escape. That's why at this stage also, mostly crimes are not punishable, except for a few. Like preparation to commit decoity, preparation for counterfeiting coins and government stamp. So at the stage of preparation also, it's difficult to prove. So there are some... Uh, crimes wherein at this stage also it may be punishable but mostly not 
like take for example someone is having like a, a false or a fake government stamp okay that does not make sense why do i need a fake government stamp of maybe ministry of human resource and development definitely i have the intention of creating some fake documents right if i am having false weights false measurements or any sort of forged documents some fake points all those things indicate that i am having the intention of committing some crime right so in such cases only at the stage of preparation crimes will be committed but mostly for majority of crimes it's not punishable because it's again difficult to establish that preparation was for committing that sort of a crime only okay next is attempt and last one is accomplishment at this two stages everything becomes punishable okay for some crimes you will see that there are two sections one provides for punishment for accomplishment or crime like murder another one would provide for punishment for attempt like attempt to murder okay there may be some crimes wherein in the same section it provides for definition okay like uh, sedition it's the same section which provides for punishment for everything at attempt accomplishment everything so there may be certain crimes wherein complete offense and attempt may be given in the same section same section same punishment there may be certain crimes wherein attempt is given differently like attempt to murder and murder there may be certain offenses where only attempt is punishable completed offense is not punishable like suicide once a person is successful in committing a suicide you cannot punish the person but for attempt yes we can punish the person okay and last one being accomplishment or crime when we look at ipc right like this sections are divided for some it's the same article same section for some there are two different sections for some only attempt is punishable completed offense is not punishable and for most of the crimes because there are so many classifications it's not possible to provide punishment for attempts as well for everything right so there are a lot many crimes wherein for attempt punishment is not given all these would fall under section 511 which says mostly like half of the maximum punishment will be the punishment for attempt if it's not defined in a separate section okay so 511 becomes relevant and in that way wherein uh, for attempt punishments will be provided as well okay so what do you think is the punishment for attempt to commit suicide attempt to commit suicide is it punishable yes ma'am there is, is three i think attempt to commit suicide 309 i think yeah so what is the punishment for that so regarding this provision right 309 it was in you know like a lot many people were against this provision because if someone is attempting suicide definitely they are in a very bad stage in their life right they don't have any other option so they decided to end their life so in such a case when we provide for punishment again right which is simple imprisonment for a term which may extend to one year also or with fine or with food so it was said that it does not make sense because the person is already suffering plus suicide also was unsuccessful and then we are again giving punishment so mostly it does not make sense so this provision was you know like uh, it goes against this another legislation we have called mental health act okay so it was said that this legislation goes against this mental health act provisions so at present the situation is like mental health act okay at present the situation is like when someone come uh, you know like attempts suicide 
court would see under what situations the person attempted. Was it like the person was going through a bad stage in his or her life? If yes, the person will not be given this punishment under IPC. Rather, the person will be given uh, this uh, counseling, okay, under provisions of Mental Health Act. The person would be given counseling. But it was decided that let's not remove section 309 from IPC because that serves a major purpose. That certain times there may be a person who is just attempting suicide for no strong enough reason. Okay, the person is not as such going through any bad stage or something personally, but still the person is attempting suicide. In those cases, it makes sense to punish the person. Can you tell me who was sent to jail multiple times under this provision 309? Are you aware there is a legislation called Armed Forces Special Powers Act, AFSPA? No, ma'am. No. no, right? Okay, so there is this legislation, Armed Forces uh, Special Powers Act, which is giving this armed persons, right, armed, armed army officials, like an absolute power. If they feel that, okay, this person, I don't, you know, like I feel like this person may commit some crime, only based on that assumption only, the person may be arrested, all right? Like that, like preventive detention law is there. It is called as a draculian law. It is, you know, like creating a lot of trouble in Northeast as well as in Jammu and Kashmir and areas like that. So this, okay. uh, she is like an activist, okay? Rob Sharmila, she was very much against this legislation. She said that this legislation should not be applicable in Manipur. And okay. unless and until you remove this legislation, I'm going on a hunger strike. I guess for 17 years or something, she was, um, yeah, 16 years old first. Okay, for 16 years, she was not eating anything, only with that straw in nose they would put, right, for patients. With that, she would have some liquid diet and she was surviving like that. So she was arrested multiple times by police officials saying that you don't, as such, personally, AFSPA is not affecting you. If it's affecting, it's, it's affecting entire Manipur, entire Northeast. So why are you doing the first, right? So that's why she was uh, sent to jail multiple times under section 309. And that's the reason why this section is not like removed from IPC. Section is there, but mostly it's not used. We use provisions of Mental Health Act, but still this is there for, uh, you know, like situations like this so that it can be addressed all right and final one is accomplishment or crime definitely it's punishable we have all the provisions all the punishment and everything given in ipc as well as crpc this uh, schedule that i have shown you you can go through this part which talks about the classification and everything okay this part is clear right yes ma'am 